join Forum IS Academy, trusted by hundreds of toppers, including IS Rank 1 Shruti Sharma. Hello and welcome to Forum IAS. Today is 24th May 2023 and these are all the articles that we are going to discuss today. Moving to the first article, it talks about India-Australia ties and our Prime Minister says that India-Australia ties are built on trust. So this is what it is but from examination point of view, we should know the map locations of Australia. We will see that. So, basically, which are all the important map points in Australia? One is the Kimberley Plateau. This area is famous for mining. And most of the prominent cities of Australia, they are located on the coastline. See here, you have Perth. You have Adelaide. Sydney, Canberra, Brisbane. So, they are all located on the coastline, important cities. Why it is not inside the continent? It is because the inside of the continent is occupied by great deserts. One of the desert is Great Victoria Desert, Gibson Desert, Simpson Desert. So, these are all the major deserts of Australia and that is the reason why major cities of Australia are located on the coastline. Then we have Great Artesian Basin. So here there is a very big groundwater reservoir. So um, apart from that we have the Murray Darling River Basin. We have the Darling River and the Murray River. So, Murray Darling River Basin is also an important map point in Australia and we have the Great Dividing Range in the eastern coast of Australia that is towards the Pacific Ocean and we have Bass Strait between Australia and Tasmania. So, these are all the important map pointings with respect to Australia. Alright, moving to the next article, it talks about the Telangana AP water dispute, especially with respect to River Krishna. So, we will see shortly what they are discussing in this particular article. So, what does the article talk about? How did this Krishna river water dispute even begin in the first place? That we have to see. So, initially there was an agreement called as gentleman's agreement. And this agreement was between the four regions of Andhra Pradesh. So, the undivided Andhra Pradesh, it has four major regions and from those four major regions, important leaders came together and they had a gentleman's agreement. So, what are these four regions? We have Telangana, Rayalaseema, Coastal Andhra. So, these are all the important regions of Andhra Pradesh that is undivided Andhra Pradesh. So, this particular gentleman's agreement, it had provisions of equitable sharing of resources. But uh, from the British period itself, the irrigation facilities were very much developed in Andhra Pradesh. Though this agreement called for equitable sharing, in reality it was not equitable because there were more irrigation facilities in Andhra Pradesh region, especially the coastal Andhra region. Then there was a Bachava tribunal. This tribunal was constituted to decide the sharing of Krishna water between three states that is Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. So this Bachava tribunal they gave allocation for Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka and the then Andhra Pradesh government 
they apportioned the water given to Andhra Pradesh in this ratio between Andhra and Telangana. Okay, and moreover, one of the tributary of the Krishna River, that is the Tungabhadra, and the dam water of Tungabhadra was to go to Telangana. But this particular provision was not implemented and this led to discontent in the Telangana region. So, after the bifurcation, what happened to this arrangement? So, the AP Reorganization Act, it does not have any provision that is, uh, it does not talk about water shares. So, uh, the Ministry of Water Resource Development, they had a meeting in 2015 and they apportioned the share of 34 66 between Telangana and AP. So basically we can call this as a mediation by central government and this was decided by the central ministry of water resources and this AP or reorganization act this particular act it talks about management of water resources by setting two boards that is one board for Krishna river that is Krishna river management board and another board for Godavari river Godavari river management board. So these two boards will be set up and they will take care of water sharing between Andhra Pradesh and Telangana state ok. So they will apportion the water between these two states. That is what the AP Reorganization Act says. But then recently in a meeting held by Krishna River Management Board, Telangana put its uh, foot down and they are asking for equal share between Andhra Pradesh and Telangana state. So there has been a deadlock and this matter has gone to Ministry of Jal Shakti. So that is the current status of the dispute. And the court case that was there pending in the Supreme Court was also withdrawn by the Telangana government. Now it is up to the respective state governments and the central government to reach to an amicable agreement. So that is the current status. Alright. Now we will see the map pointings. So we have the Krishna river and the origin of the Krishna river is Mahabaleshwar. And this Mahabaleshwar is located in Maharashtra. So, the Krishna river has left bank and right bank tributaries. The biggest tributary of Krishna river is the Bhima river which is a left bank tributary. And this Bhima river has a tributary called Sina. So, Bhima and Sina they merge together and form Bhima. Another left bank tributary is Musi river. And this Musi river, it passes through Hyderabad city. So, sometimes in UPSC questions are asked in terms of how, uh, which river is passing through a city. So, for that you need to remember that Musi river is passing through Hyderabad city. And then we have the right bank tributaries of river Krishna, which are the Prabha rivers. That is Ghata Prabha, Malaprabha, Tungabhadra. And lastly, we have Hagari. Okay. And here it is not mentioned. Actually, two rivers, Tunga and Bhadra, they merge to form Tungabhadra. And we have one more tributary of Krishna, which is actually a tributary of Tungabhadra called as Hagari. So, this is very important for map pointing. This entire image is very important. Alright, moving to the next article, it talks about EU's carbon border adjustment mechanism. We will see about it. It might look complex but it is just a simple concept. So first, in order to understand, we should first know what is carbon leakage. That is, we know that EU has strong environmental norms. So, if somebody has to produce carbon intensive products like say for example cement or fertilizer, they are very carbon intensive but in EU they have very strong regulations. So, instead of that, if a particular person in EU, they are going to import the same cement from outside EU, then what happens? They are not paying the carbon price. 
say for example the cement was manufactured in india where the environmental norms are not so strict right so this eu vendor they will find that it is cheaper for them to import from india rather than producing it in eu itself so what happens if this is happening effectively eu wants to control pollution right but if you are importing from another country where pollution norms are not strict effectively if not in eu you are causing pollution in some other country right india so whether the pollution is caused in eu or india the effect of it is going to be felt by the entire globe so this is called as carbon leakage instead of setting up and adhering to the norms of the eu if they are importing from a country where the norms are lax then the effective goal of reducing pollution is not satisfied that is carbon leakage that is what is given here eu manufacturer moves carbon intensive production say for example cement to countries outside the region with less stringent climate policies in other words if this eu manufactured products they are replaced with carbon intensive imports and these imports come from jurisdictions where there is less stringent climate policies so in order to prevent this only the carbon border adjustment mechanism cbam has come into force so uh, it hasn't come into force actually it will come into force in 2026 so this is a method to avoid carbon leakage so if importers are there in eu and if they have to buy cement from say for example we'll take the same example cement is coming from india then they have to buy carbon certificates carbon certificate corresponding to the payable carbon price of the import in case the manufacturer is producing cement in eu then they have to adhere to environmental norms and for that they will pay a price right so that is carbon price but they are avoiding this carbon price by importing from india right so in order to equalize this particular carbon price they have to buy carbon certificates okay so that whether they are producing in eu or whether they are importing from other countries they will have the same price and the effective goal of reducing pollution is being achieved but if a non eu producer is paying a price or tax for carbon used to produce the imported goods back home or in some other country the corresponding cost would be deducted for the eu importer that is if suddenly india became strict with its environmental norms and the cement manufacturer in india is paying some sort of carbon tax and the equivalent respite will be given to the eu importer because already the carbon cost is being paid and if it is being paid the particular person who is exporting cement from india they will include that in the cost of the product so effectively the carbon price is being paid and in eu they need they can buy carbon certificate with reduced price okay so simply saying whether or not you are buying some pollution causing product from eu or outside eu you have to pay the same carbon price carbon price is the price you pay for polluting the environment this is the simple explanation okay so why this uh, eu is coming up with this carbon border adjustment mechanism it is to avert the possibility of carbon leakage and encouraging producers in non eu countries also to green their manufacturing process so if the eu importer if they should not have to pay the price for carbon certificate then the indian manufacturer should have green manufacturing then only it, the eu importer would be interested to buy the product okay so it will give an impetus for 
produces even outside EU to adopt a green manufacturing process. Why? Because EU has a green deal. This can be asked. Green deal is related to which? Similarly, CVAM is related to which? They can give you options US, UK, EU, etc. The correct answer is EU. Right? So, green deal is saying that EU will become a carbon climate neutral continent by 2050 and they will achieve 55% reduction in carbon emissions compared to 1990 levels by 2030. So, what will this cause for other countries? Because of this CBAM, other countries are worried. Why? Because See, countries like Russia, China, Turkey, they are all exposed to the mechanism. So, what happens is the import competitiveness, I write here, import export is there. And if CBAM is implemented, then it will make the goods costly. So, it will reduce the export competitiveness. So, this might reduce the amount of exports to EU and by virtue of that, these countries which are exporting most to the EU will be affected because if the EU importer, they have to pay the same price for importing as well as for producing in their home country, then they would rather produce in their home country, right? So, these countries which are exporting to EU will be very much affected and for us we are more worried about India right so the countries in the EU combined represent about 14 percent of India's export mix so for India also this is a bad news so EU is the third largest trade partner of India so in respect of this fact India will be affected and if EU is implementing CBAM, then other countries would also implement this. Say for example, US may also bring such norms to be followed. So, these are all the reasons why India is being worried. Let's move on to the next article. Next article talks about a smart cities mission and it says that 73% smart city projects are completed. 90% of the funds have been utilized, 73% of the projects have been completed. So, uh, Smart Cities Mission, it had around 7,800 projects worth rupees 1.8 lakh crore and out of these 5,700 projects worth 1.1 lakh crore have been completed. So, this particular Smart Cities Mission, we know that it got launched in June 2015 and it has gotten one more year extension last month. So, it will effectively be completed by 2024. Okay. And this mission comes under Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Smart Cities Mission. So, basically um, in this Smart Cities Mission, there are almost 100 cities that were selected. And the main objective of this particular mission is to promote cities that can provide core infrastructure, clean and sustainable environment and give decent quality of life. To give a decent quality of life, that is the aim of the smart cities mission and this is a centrally sponsored scheme and central government has allocated almost rupees 100 crore per city per year and rest of the fund will be matched by the state or urban local body. Apart from the state government, uh, funds can be raised from urban local bodies own funds, finance commission grants, uh, finance mechanisms like municipal bonds, other government programs through this smart cities mission is funded and even public private partnerships through this mode also smart city projects will be completed. So, this is how the smart cities mission work. 
it will get over by next year so there are chances that this might be asked so totally there are 100 smart cities the last article of the day it says that there will be a digital india bill and this draft will be released in the month of june and this bill will be introduced in the parliament and the aim of the government is to pass this bill within this year so we had the information technology act 2000 after that this is the one of the major information technology and internet related law okay so in this they are even regulating ai why because even chat gpt's executive they have pushed for limits on the use of ai so basically the approach in the bill is about regulating ai through the prism of user harm so to the extent of the harm caused uh, the AI will be restricted or it would be subject to very strict government regulation. So, there will be no-go areas for technologies. These are all being spelt out in this draft bill and when this draft bill comes to the open arena, we will discuss more about it. Now, we will go through some previous year questions. So, the first question is, as per recent amendment to the Indian Forest Act 1927, forest dwellers have the right to fell the bamboos grown on forest areas. So, there was an amendment to Indian Forest Act in 2019 and as a result, actually bamboo is a grass. But in Indian Forest Act, bamboo was called as a tree. But because of this amendment, bamboo was removed from the classification of tree. Bamboo is not a tree. So, if it is not a tree, then it can be felled by the forest dwellers. Second statement, as per the scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers, recognition of Forest Rights Act, bamboo is a minor forest produce. So, according to Forest Rights Act, bamboo is a minor produce forest produce. Next, scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers recognition of Forest Rights Act allows ownership of minor forest produce to forest dwellers. So, it allows ownership of minor forest produce. Yes, this is correct. They are allowed to collect minor forest produce like honey, tendu leaves, etc. So, all the statements are correct. Answer is the 1, 2 and 3. Next question, which article of the constitution safeguards one's right to marry the person of one's choice? Article 90, 21, 25, 29. Answer is Article 21, right to life and liberty. And this comes from the Hadia case. So, that is some extra information for you. Next question, the chairman of public sector banks are selected by... A. Bank Board Bureau, C. B. Reserve Bank of India, C. Union Ministry of Finance, D. Management of Concerned Bank, Public Sector Bank like SBI, Bank of Baroda, right? Indian Bank. For them, the chairman are selected by the Bank Board Bureau. So, this is the answer. That's it for today's discussion. Follow us on all these social media platforms to get interesting videos and content. This is Indumati signing off. All the best. Have a good day.